All right, y'all, so today is going to be Unit 4, Day 19. Reminders, as always, if I had your history notebook out and you take notes as you move through the video, and make sure you complete the vocabulary for this video, either highlight in your notes or create a note card of it. So let's go ahead and get started. So our terms for today are going to be Japanese Miracle, Korean War, Little Tigers, and the Vietnam War. Not that many today. Let's go ahead and get started. So our concepts for today are the Japanese political and economic development after World War II, and Southeast Asia after World War II. So, let's start with Japan after uh, 1945. Basically, let's do some basic political economic history. If you remember that America won World War II when they dropped the atomic bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. After World War II, America is going to occupy Japan and help create a stable democracy. At first, America will break up the Japanese sabatsus, which are large factory combines that are huge industrial centers that include multiple goods. America will establish basic rules for capitalism. They will help rebuild industries. They will help establish democracy in Japan. They'll press for female suffrage and the abolishment of a state religion. Shintoism is no longer the official religion for Japan. Uh, they're going to have few resources, being an island, no overseas empire. Uh, the, Japan will benefit greatly from uh, U.S. aid and investments. They will not have a very large defense budget because of the United States protection. And it could use that money on its industry and rebuilding its factories after the war. These Japanese government uh, will be dominated by liberal Democrats uh, who cooperate with the business. Japan will be one of the countries that, similar to before World War II, will a lot of their businesses will be sponsored by the government so like japan uh will ha so japan will have private companies but the government will help subsidize them uh giving them tax breaks you know supporting their buildings etc now there is uh, a big economic event that you need to know in japan it's called the japanese economic miracle the japanese economy is going to boom and become the second largest economy in the world even after basically being almost wiped out during World War II. Uh, the Japanese economy first will begin with labor-intensive exports, textiles, iron, steel. Uh, then Japan will shift to more capital-intensive investment in industries like uh, electronics, cars, aircrafts, shipping. Uh, uh, things are like phones, computers, when those become big. Uh, telecommunications, phones, all the electronics you get go into phones. Uh, economic, the Japanese economy will have rapid growth, exporting electronics, cars, and TVs. In the 60s through the 80s, Japan will have a re uh, they will be extremely successful. In the 90s, they'll have a recession, uh, but Japan's economy is going to boom because of its shift, its shift toward exporting electronics to the rest of the world. A lot of Japanese products. Uh, like cars, computers, and TVs are made in Japan. Uh, Mitsubishi is a car company. Uh, Toshiba, Sony are all from Japan. Um, and they're really, really big in uh, the making electronics and exporting. So some countries are going to want to copy Japan's success. They see how the economy is booming, and they're going to focus on exporting electronics. These countries are known as Little Tigers. Uh, the countries like Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea, which are the big ones, uh, Taiwan, uh, they're going to follow Japanese model of export-driven industry for electronics. They're going to have a lot of industrial wealth of, of capitalism. Trade is going to lead to democratization. Uh, it's going to lead to pressure for reform. Uh, both South Korea and Taiwan were originally dictatorships, but they do become democracies in the by 1980s um, and more in the 1990s. Just like Japan, the government will help support the business with tax breaks, a bit of subsidization. Those begin to make electronics. A good example of a little tiger of South Korea. They have Kia, they have Nissan, which are car companies. They also have Samsung, uh, which is going to be you know the second biggest competitor in the U.S. market for phones. All of these examples, Thailand and Malaysia, uh, and Indonesia are also joining these nations and are also focusing on the export of electronics, thus making themselves more successful and uh, bringing a lot of money into their economies. All right, so let's talk about some wars in Asia. The, most of these are going to be proxy wars during the Cold War. 
We've talked about how Russia and the United States never officially fought directly, but both countries will fight indirectly in third world nations. Uh, Russia will invade Afghanistan, and America will help the Afghan rebels. Americas have two examples of these proxy wars um, in Asia, the Korean War and the Vietnam War. So let's talk about the Korean War first. After World War II, America will be... The, Korea will be divided at the 38th parallel. South Korea was the ally of the United States under the uh, Sigmund Rhee. Uh, North Korea was a communist state. 1950, the North Korean troops are going to cross the 38th parallel and try to invade South Korea. America and the United Nations are going to get involved in Korea, and they're going to push the communists back all the way to the Chinese border. What's going to happen is this is going to frighten the Chinese, and they're going to send a million soldiers, and they're going to push the Americans and the United Nations back all the way to the 38th parallel. So if we look at this picture, right? So the North Koreans are going to invade all of almost all the way to the uh, to the shore of South Korea. Americans going to come back and push them all the way to China. And then China is going to get involved and push them all the way to the 38th parallel. Uh, in, in 1953, uh, both sides will agree to a ceasefire at the 38th parallel. So the war will end where it began with nobody gaining or losing any um, land or territory. Uh this will stop Korea from becoming communism uh, uh, or falling to communism. Korea is still two countries today, which is going to be different from Vietnam. During this time, America would create an alliance system of non-communist countries uh, like they have NATO in Western Europe and North America. They're going to create company, something called SEATO, which is the Southeast Asian Treaty Organization. America was afraid that uh, of countries becoming communist during this time. Uh, this is a whole idea of containment. Uh, they believe that, and the idea of containment is that if one country falls to communism, the rest will fall to communism. This is called domino theories. So like when you line up a row of dominoes and you knock one over, they all fall down. Uh, so America was afraid that if they let Vietnam become communist, some communist or Korea become communist, Japan will fall to communism, then all of the Pacific will fall to communism, and next thing you know, we'll all be speaking Russian. Um, so whenever, so the United States has to stop communism, and that's what domino theory is, the containment of it. So let's talk about Vietnam. From 1940 to 1945, Japan is going to occupy the whole area. Within the first couple of weeks of World War II, uh, the Viet Minh, uh, uh, they're going to uh, launch guerrilla warfare against the Japanese, and they're really going to kind of really be successful at fighting against the Japanese. At the end of World War II, the war saw the English, French, and Dutch determined to restore their colonies, and the French want Vietnam back. Uh, so... Uh, America will grant the Philippine independence, but the Vietnamese under Ho Chi Minh, uh, they thought they were going to be given independence after World War II. They were not, so they began to fight a guerrilla warfare against the French. Ho Chi Minh did declare independence, but then France reinvaded Vietnam after World War II. They were going to restore and reassert colonial rule. They, they're, they are going to recapture Saigon and South Vietnam. Uh, Ho Chi Minh and his followers, the Viet Minh, are going to conduct guerrilla war warfare from the countryside. They will be aided by communist China. The Viet Minh will defeat the French um, in 1954 at the Battle of Binh Dien Phu. Uh, in 1954, in the Battle of Binh Dien Phu, the, Jap the, the Vietnamese will surround the French army and eventually force them to surrender. The French are going to pull out of Vietnam. And America had been giving money and aid to the French because they were afraid of Vietnam becoming communist. In 1954, they're going to have the Geneva Conference, and Vietnam will temporarily be divided between North and South Vietnam. Northern Vietnamese, uh, Vietnam will become communist, and the Southern Viet Vietnam will become non-communist. They promised to have elections soon uh, to see if they be reunited. The United States was first supportive, that first supported the French, and they'll support the unpopular government of South Vietnam. The South Vietnamese will not hold elections as they feared that they would lost. The North Vietnamese will receive assistance from the USSR and China. America throughout the 1960s will get more involved in Vietnam. Now, 
Northern Vietnam, let's not make any assumptions um, that they were like, uh, you know, great and they were only once best for Vietnam. They were a totalitarian state. Ho Chi Minh will uh, execute anybody against him. Uh, he will have gulags. They were a totalitarian dictatorship. But South, Viet South Vietnam was not popular. They were seen as an American puppet, and a lot of Viet a lot of a lot of the Vietnamese wanted to unite. Um, the South Vietnamese government was uh, run by a Catholic uh, man who was put in charge, uh, which is not going to be um, not going to be popular. Uh, America is going to get more involved because they felt that they didn't, that all of it would have fallen to communism much earlier. So the United States is going to start bombing Vietnam, Vietnam in 1964. They're going to start putting more soldiers in the late 50s, early 60s. We're going to start launching attacks in the 60s. Throughout the whole time, U.S. presidents like Lyndon B. Johnson, John F. Kennedy, and Richard Nixon were saying that we're winning Vietnam. Uh, but more and more people just kept dying. The Vietnamese also were doing guerrilla warfare. This was the first um, war that really utilized TV and that um, the American people could really see what was happening. Uh, massacres by American soldiers were documented and shown. Uh, a lot of it probably wasn't very different than what happened in World War II, but now it's publicized and very, very open to the people. Um, there's... Uh, during this time, there was a lot of also anti-war movements in the United States with the rise of the hippie movement and more and more people, more and more Americans were turning against the Vietnam War. This is basically going to destroy uh, President Johnson's presidency and American, and American troops will be trapped in a quagmire until President Nixon pulls all of U.S. soldiers out in 1973. America will leave Vietnam by 1975 and North Vietnam will invade South Vietnam. Now all of Vietnam is communism. So this is a war that the United States does lose, and it's going to have a big, big psychological impact on America. This is going to lead to what is known as the stagnant 70s, where America feels like it lost because it did, and that they're not the greatest nation that they were in the 40s and 50s and 60s. There's also going to be huge inflation during this time. This is going to lead to a lot of kind of questioning that if the United States is actually the biggest um, power and it's the best. Right, and those those kind of sentiments still linger today. All right, so again, North Vietnam will eventually conquer all of South Vietnam. That's all I have for you today. Um, so thank you guys for listening. If you have any questions, please ask, and I'll see you guys in class. All right, bye.